Hello students. Today we are going to start with a new topic, gene therapy for cancer. Now as we all are aware, cancer is nothing but unregulated cell division, wherein the normal cells, the way they normally divide, they start behaving weird because of some uh, deformity and that leads to uncontrolled cell growth. So uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells anywhere in the body is called as cancer. There are several reasons for cancer like exposure to toxic compounds, ionizing radiation, human genetics, certain pathogens such as exposure to virus, inactivation of tumor suppression genes such as BRCA1 and 2. Now BRCA1 and 2 are best known genes linked to breast cancer. BRCA stands for breast cancer susceptibility gene. While most women have a 1 in 8 chance of developing breast cancer in their lifetime, but women with mutated BRCA1 or BRCA2 genes may have as much as a 4 in 5 chance and are more likely to develop cancer at an early age. Everyone possesses BRCA1 and 2 genes which help regulate cellular growth and suppress the development of tumors. Mutations to either gene can result in uncontrolled cell growth, which can be cancerous. The BRCA genes are hereditary, means that you receive a copy of each gene from each parent. If both the genes are mutated, your risk of cancer increases, and if you receive a normal copy of the gene from one parent and a mutated copy from the other, the normal gene controls the cell growth. Should the normal gene mutate, however, your risk of cancer increases at the site of the mutation. For women, this is usually in the breast or ovaries. While these two genes perform similar functions, but still there is a difference between BRCA1 and BRCA2. The two genes are found on different chromosomes. BRCA1 is located on chromosome 17 and BRCA2 is found on chromosome 13. Another difference between BRCA1 and BRCA2 can be found in how each mutation affects our risk of cancer. Now cells become cancerous due to the accumulation of defects or mutation in their DNA. Now there can be several reasons like inherited genetic defects as we discussed the case of BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutation. There can be several infections that lead to mutation in DNA, environmental factors like air pollution, poor lifestyle choices, heavy smoking, heavy drinking that can also damage the DNA and can lead to cancer. Most of the time cells are able to detect and repair the DNA damage. If a cell is severely damaged and cannot repair itself, it undergoes the so-called programmed cell death, which is also called as apoptosis. Cancer occurs when damaged cells grow, divide and spread abnormally instead of self-destructing as they should. There are several cancer treatment options like immunotherapy, radiation therapy, targeted therapy, chemotherapy, bone marrow transplantation, surgery, and hormone therapy. Now, the widely used cancer treatment is chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and surgery. And most of the time, it is a combination of all these three treatment or maybe two of them. One thing we need to understand that cancer is a complex genetic disease in which more than one gene is involved. A transformed cell usually gains some important biological properties to establish a malignant disease. Now those properties can be uncontrolled proliferation that is uncontrolled growth, evasion of growth suppressors, inhibition of apoptosis, replicative immortality, angiogenesis, proliferative signals, invasion and metastasis. They are discussed in detail in the review of Hannah Ann Weinberg. You can refer that review. 
Now, cancer treatment has been the major goal of the gene therapy studies over the decades. Although there is no cancer gene therapy drug in the market yet, but substantial progress has been made in defining potential targets and in developing viral and non-viral gene delivery systems recently. Numerous genes have been studied as the targets for cancer gene therapy so far. Now, various gene therapy strategies include suicide gene therapy, oncolytic viral therapy, anti-angiogenesis, and gene therapy vaccines. Combination of gene therapy with conventional methods such as chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and immunotherapy has been further improved, and this improvement has improved the therapeutic efficacy. Although the preclinical and experimental studies have yielded highly encouraging results, there are still few gene therapy agents at phase 3 trials. Now it has long been suggested that the cancer has evolved from a single cell transformed by the influence of the environmental factors such as physical factor, chemical factor, viruses. Changes in hundreds of genes so called mutations are required to transform a normal cell into a cancer cell. So this was an earlier concept that a single cell is transformed into a cancerous cell under several influences, uh, several factors, but this is not the case. A normal cell requires hundreds and thousands, several mutations, only then it gets converted into a cancer cell. The major functional changes that transform a cell are mainly activation of oncogenes or inactivation of tumor suppressor genes. For that, we need to understand the concept of proto-oncogenes and oncogenes. Proto-oncogenes, these are the genes that could lead to unregulated cell growth or uncontrolled cell growth if they get damaged. If they get damaged. Whereas the oncogenes, that means they are the damaged genes. And that's why they cause uncontrolled cell growth. Now, this is the tumor suppressor protein, how it you know, stops this growth of uh, cancer cells. Whenever there is an external signal molecule that gives the signal to the cell receptor to divide, this signal transmission is blocked by the tumor suppressor protein, which blocks the uncontrolled growth of cancer cell if a cell is behaving abnormally but as we studied earlier the inactivation of tumor suppressor gene results in uncontrolled cell growth because this tumor suppressor protein is responsible for giving the signal to block the cell division cancer is a genetic disease which develops by a multi-stage process in which inherited and somatic mutations in two classes of genes, that is proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes, play major contributing roles. Now, the, these are the two main targets for usually most of the cancer gene therapy, that is oncogene activation and tumor suppressor gene inactivation. These are the two reasons that causes cancer. Therefore, these two things, oncogene and tumor tumor suppressor gene are the targets for cancer gene therapy what we need to do we need to deactivate the oncogene and we need to activate the tumor suppressor gene for the cancerous cell so that our own immune system goes and kills the cancerous cell now there are certain prerequisites for cancer prerequisites for a successful gene therapy program in cancer such as a suitable target to be replaced or modified a carrier to reach the interest of gene into the cell a successful targeting of the vector a sufficient expression of the therapeutic genes in the target cells besides a strong therapeutic efficacy safety is also mandatory for the success of the treatment so identification of suitable gene introducing it into the target cell using several vectors like viral non-viral or cell based and most important the safety now 
now different vehicles have been used to introduce the genes into the cells such as viral non viral cell based the mainly used viral vectors in cancer gene therapy are retrovirus adenovirus and adeno associated viruses the gene therapist uses the capability of the virus to enter and reprogram the action of cells for purpose of therapy the therapeutic genetic element is first placed into a viral backbone to produce a complete therapeutic viral vector alternatively the therapeutic genetic elements can be delivered into the cancer cells through droplets of fat that are called as either liposomes or via nanoparticles the genes themselves in the form of naked dna or dna packed into particles can be administered locally or systemat- systemically a third we are delivering the genes to the target tissues is accomplished by using living cells such as irradiated tumor cells blood cells and mesenchymal or neuronal stem cells all of these cells have the capability to home particular type of target tissue through the blood stream in this way the therapeutic genes can be placed into the brain or other target tissues because of the homing properties of those cells and for the safety of the procedure and the increased therapeutic efficacy the genes of interest should be expressed in only target cells this is very much essential point that the sparing of normal cells and tissues should be focused on the target specificity is what we require the target specificity of specificity of the vectors could be achieved by targeting of those specific to the tumor cells or tissues now there are several prospective strategies currently being used for targeting cancer using gene therapy like expressing a gene to induce apoptosis or enhance tumor sensitivity to conventional drug or radiation therapy inserting a wild type tumor suppressor gene to compensate for its loss blocking the expression of an onco gene by using an antisense approach enhancing the immunogenicity of the tumor to stimulate the immune cell recognition now defective apop tick signaling stemming from mutations or imbalances in the expression of pro or anti apoptotic genes results in resistance to apoptosis in malignant cells that provide the rationale for gene therapy to target the apoptosis machinery so basically the cancerous cells their machinery it makes the apoptosis mechanism defective this is the reason the cells they do not die naturally and they keep on growing in uncontrollable fashion and thus we can target this defective apoptosis machinery and by inserting a corrective gene and thus initiating reinitiating the apoptosis machinery induction of apoptosis either by introducing genes encoding an inducer mediator or executioner of apoptosis is among the most common approaches employed in cancer gene therapy we will see a few examples and case studies to understand it much better tnf related apoptosis inducing ligand is an example of an apoptosis inducer used in cancer treatment that has been found to kill a wide variety of tumor cells with minimal toxic effects on normal cells melanoma differentiation associated gene 7 also known as interleukin 24 a member of IL-10 gene family is another example of an apoptosis inducer which selectively provokes apoptosis in various cancers without showing any detrimental effect on corresponding normal tissue then there are several ways of gene silencing of anti apoptotic genes in malignant cells that represents also a strategy to sensitize them to pro apoptotic reagents or radiotherapy which are frequently used therapeutic approaches in cancer gene therapy let's take a case study to understand it further better a large number of tumor suppressor genes including p53 retinoblastoma gene rb and several that have been identified 
and numerous attempts have been made to deliver these genes specifically to cancer cells to restore the normal functions. In 1996, retroviral vectors expressing human P53 under the control of an actin promoter were used to treat non-small cell lung carcinoma and retardation in cell growth rate was achieved in melanoma cells treated with antisense oligonucleotide targeting the CMYC gene. Mutations in KRAS, a member of RAS gene family, commonly occurs in human colon cancers and disruption of KRAS by antisense RNA leads to apoptosis and tumor growth suppression both in vitro and in vivo in animal models. There is also a new approach that is prodrug approach, conversion of prodrugs into active compounds to exert in situ cytotoxic effects by introducing genes that encode the converting enzyme. This is an effective approach in cancer gene therapy. The most common example of this approach is the delivery of herpes simplex virus, thymidine kinase, followed by treatment with cancyclovir. This approach has translated into the clinic and several phase 1 clinical trials are now going on to treat patients with prostate cancer. Development of chemoresistance during the therapeutic process is one of the major factors that leads to failure of many forms of chemotherapy. The genetic or gene therapy, it can help in that by selectively silencing the proto-oncogenes that might help override such resistance.